point blank. I never seen nobody play like he plays. And uh, I mean, you can you can include all of them. That wasn't Michael Jordan out there. It was God disguised as Michael Jordan. It's just God disguised as Michael Jordan. This phrase, which captures the essence of Michael Jordan's career, has always resonated with me when discussing the legend around him. Granted that no one is a god, you have to acknowledge how much Jordan altered the landscape of basketball. He was performing something on the basketball court that had never been seen before. The admiration and love Bird and many others felt for Michael Jordan's basketball skills was mirrored in the statement which became renowned. It's evidence of Jordan's influence on the game and his ability for nearly superhuman performances. And that got me thinking about which other NBA legends referred to Michael Jordan as a basketball god, or which stories depicted him as a supernatural figure. So I will present 10 NBA legends who have told unreal stories and portrayed Michael Jordan as a guide. We will start with Shaquille O'Neal, one of the greatest basketball players of all time, who has expressed genuine appreciation and regard for Michael Jordan on numerous occasions. Shaq acknowledges Jordan's impact on the game and recognizes him as a basketball icon. He often highlights Jordan's influence on his own career and the league as a whole. His respect for Jordan goes beyond their on-court rivalry, and when he was in an interview with Patrick Bet David, he showed his ultimate appreciation by saying this about Michael Jordan. Was there anybody that you kind of avoided talking smack to because if you did, yeah. your spirit got bigger and they wanted to beat you or? Michael Jordan, you don't want to mess with God. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta stay away from Mike. Leave that man alone. LeBron James holds Michael Jordan in high regard as a basketball idol, and he has often stated that he grew up watching Jordan and imitating his play style. He respects Jordan's contribution to the game as both a player and a cultural figure. Despite the inevitable comparisons, LeBron has never stopped expressing his respect for Jordan and the lasting impact he left on the game. You will see how he maintains the same love from 24 years old to 33. Michael Jordan was kind of like that god. He was that, that, that angel sent from heaven that that I kind of used him to help me get through some of the darkest days that I had. Even at people say, well, you're only nine years old, but you know, there's a lot of dark days, you know, when you grow up the way I grew up and, and, and you're part of a single parent household. So, you know, every other day, if I got an opportunity on WGN to watch Mike, it gave me another boost of life. You know, it made me feel that I can make it out of this situation. But when I met Michael Jordan for the first time, I literally couldn't believe it was him. I couldn't believe it. Like people, you know, I felt the dude looked like Jesus Christ to me. <laughs> he looked like black. He looked, you know, he was black Jesus to me. Nobody could tell me anything different. I think it was my junior year of high school. I go up to Chicago and I go to a gym called Hoops where he, he plays basketball in the summertime. And before they play, they say Mike always, you know, used to lift before they play. Uh, and I didn't know he was going to be there. Uh, we walk up there. The first person I see is Charles Oakley. You know, Oak being from Cleveland, dapped him up. I had seen Oak around the city a few times, you know. And Oak moved. And when he moves, Mike is sitting on the bench press. But I seen him, I seen him walking towards me. And it was kind of like he was walking on air. He, I, I was, I had, to, I had to pinch myself. Was, was, is that Mike? Michael. I didn't think he was real, man. You don't understand. I didn't think Michael Jordan was real. I only thought he lived in the TV, either in games or commercials or come fly with me on cassette tapes. Wow, yeah. I didn't think he was real. And when I saw him, I was like, if, if the man above would have took me that day, I would have lived a hell of a life, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> I have to see him like that. Next, we got Tracy McGrady, a basketball legend in his own right, holds a deep respect for Michael Jordan. McGrady has spoken highly of Jordan's influence on his career and the game of basketball as a whole. Here's this interesting clip of McGrady talking about how meeting Michael Jordan when he was only 17 years old had a huge effect on him. The story goes on to show the lasting mark Jordan made, making it a memorable moment in McGrady's basketball career. How was it like playing against MJ your rookie year? Shaking in my boots. <laughs> first time, <laughs> shaking it, shake, shaking it in the first time I had the guard. I'm like, yo, this, oh, man. First of all, let me go back. 1997, <laughs> MJ them in the playoffs. I think they they played against the Hawks, right? I'm at the game, playoff game, bro. I got an opportunity to go uh, in the back by the locker room after the game. So I'm standing back there. I'm 17 years old, kid. 
I, I've never been around NBA players like this or even, you know, I've never been around somebody like MJ. So I'm standing back there, kid, and Pip Black comes Jesus. out. Pip comes out. All these players start coming out. Mike comes around that corner. Bruh, I ain't gonna lie to you. The man had a glow, bro. I swear, Mike, Mike, dog, that shit is real. <laughs> I believe it. I said it's real. Hey, hey, K, hey, KG said the same thing. You just feel his energy. Um, He'll say hey, shit. You feel that energy. I'm not. I'm not joking, it's bro. Black it's Jesus, real, man. I'm telling bro, you. Mike came out. I was like, damn, bro. I ain't know what to say, man. I was like. <laughs> That's MJ, dog. That's MJ. In an interesting conversation, basketball legends Gary Payton and Kevin Garnett were in the same room and talked about what makes Michael Jordan different from Kobe Bryant and LeBron James. As they talked about Jordan, both Payton and Garnett, who are regarded as legends who made opponents afraid during their long careers, changed the mood. The very mention of Jordan creates a unique atmosphere that emphasizes the unmatched influence and aura that surrounds this legend. <laughs> I would, took Jordan. You took Jordan? I'm never going against Jordan, dog. I've never seen it. I thought Michael Jordan was Jesus Christ, like, playing to be Michael Jordan. <laughs> I swear to God, dog. We called him Black Jesus for a reason. I played against him a long time, and he just did it. You know, he, he just had, he had all that. He just had the mentality to win. And if it gets close... <sighs> He gonna take the shot. The basketball world is well aware of Allen Iverson's deep respect for Michael Jordan. But for those who haven't seen it yet, this video does a magnificent job of capturing the incredible effect Jordan had on Iverson when he first met in person. It captures the incredible experience of Iverson meeting Jordan face to face and provides a personal look at the deep respect and admiration that the legendary player inspired in one of the greatest players of all time. Check it out. I, w I walked out on the court and I, I looked at him, and for the first time in my life, a human being didn't look real to me. You <laughs> know what I mean? Like, I don't know if y'all watch the Chappelle show, but he, he, he talked about a certain incident where he seen somebody seeing Rick James. And, like, I literally seen his aura. Like, like he, it, looked like he was, it looked like he was glowing. And I'm, and I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm saying to myself, like, man, that's Mike. Reggie Miller, who was a known trash talker in the NBA, had a welcome to the league moment with Michael Jordan in his rookie year. This was a humbling experience with Reggie Miller, and it made sure that he will never talk trash to Michael Jordan. Rookie year, uh -huh. we were playing the Chicago Bulls, and this is Michael Jordan's third or fourth year in. Okay. And we were playing an ex exhibition game in some obscure place. And most veterans do not like to play in exhibition games. They want to get to the real thing. I'm a wide-eyed, energetic rookie. And we're playing this exhibition game, and Michael's going through the motion. And Chuck Person, who's on my team, who's a trash talker as well, is like, can you believe Michael Jordan, the guy everyone's talking about, who's supposed to be able to walk on water? You're out here killing him, Reg. This is in the first half. He's <laughs> like, you should be talking to him. He's like, you know, you're right. Michael, who do you think you are? <laughs> the great Michael Jordan? That's right. There's a new kid on town, right? Kind of looks at me and starts shaking his head. So at half, I have 10 and he has four points, right? And I'm doing all this talking. He's like, okay. End of the, end of the game in the second half, he ended up with 44. <laughs> and I ended up with 12. <laughs> so he outscored me 40 to two. And as he's walking off, he's like, be sure and be careful. You never talk to black Jesus like that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Black Jesus. I'm so sorry. Did you ever do it again? Never to Michael Jordan. Never to Michael. Okay, there is one legend who refused to call him Black Jesus and wanted all the smoke no matter what, and that was Kobe Bryant. Kobe had super high respect for Michael Jordan and knew that Jordan had the blueprint for the game he wanted to emulate. They had a mentor and mentee relationship that was my favorite in all of sports. In these clips, you will see the amount of inspiration Jordan brought to Kobe. You know, so like, when, <laughs> I tell you, like when we, when I was in high school, um, and uh, I used to work out with the 76ers, I used to ask them, you know, what's it like to guard Mike? You go, Mike? You mean Black Jesus? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> black who? Oh, well, we call him Black Jesus. Or you can call him Black Cat. I'm like, I'm going to call him fucking Mike. That's his fucking name. 
So the level of fear that he inspired in others was insane. Wow. And I would tell him, I said, when I face him, we're going to go at it. He says, oh, you don't want to do that. I'm like, what? Man, you don't know me, man. And so when we matched up, I think he understood that. And, you know, when I was 18, my first year, and he got the best of me a bunch of times. I was right there the next play. You're not intimidating me. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. And I think he saw that level of respect because I think he was the same way at 18 years old. And that common bond is, is what I think, uh, you know, where our connection was built. If you step out there on the court, we're taking heads off. It's not, it's not, there's no, I don't want to hear it. Like, I don't want to hear Michael's the best player in the world. I want to hear they call him Black Jesus. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> you don't have to show me. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that's yeah. that. <laughs> All right. Now, let's go back to what Larry Bird meant by his famous quote. In 1986, Michael Jordan scored an amazing 63 points against the Boston Celtics, considered by most to be one of the greatest teams in NBA history. Even though the Celtics had a great defense, Jordan came into their home court like a one-man army. His amazing play still holds the record for most points scored in a playoff game, showing how skilled and determined he was. Jordan reached a level of greatness during that game that left fans in awe. It was an important moment in the story of his known career. That wasn't Michael Jordan out there. It was God disguised as Michael Jordan. Rephrase that. I mean to cut you off. God in the basketball uniform. After the game, Larry Bird would say, I didn't think anyone was capable of doing what Michael has done to us. Nobody like him. <laughs> Point blank. I never seen nobody play like he plays. And uh, I mean, you, can, you can include all of them. It's hard to believe a guy score that many baskets and uh, uh, and they lose, but uh, I know we started Dennis Johnson out on him, and then we went with uh, Danny Ainge, myself, uh, which it was real easy then when I started guarding him. Uh, then Bill Walton, and we was trying to run him to help all the time, but he had his outside shot going so well that he really didn't need to penetrate that much. Got it! 63 for Jordan! And before I show the last legend, here is Zion Williamson who shared his story about the first time he met Michael Jordan. You get to see a player who never played against Jordan and never got the chance to watch him play live in his prime years talk about a presence he never felt before. And then after that, I have a very interesting clip of Michael Jordan's former coach, Doug Collins, sharing how the fans were when Michael Jordan was just in their vicinity. When I met him for the very first time, uh -huh. I was at, uh, all-Star Weekend, my rookie year, and it was at his Jordan brand party. Yeah. And it's like you said, like, <laughs> you, you can't, you can't describe that. You can't describe that feeling you get. It's, <laughs> it's, it's one of those, that's him. Yes. <laughs> and he don't even play no more. Like, you, you like, that's him. Like, yes, that, that's the guy. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, it's like you said, it was like me, meeting Black Jesus or something like <laughs> that, That's him right there. It's almost scary um, when you go on the road to see the reaction that people give Michael. I mean, uh, the kids that come to the hotel to, to try to catch Michael getting on the bus, and he's got to get on the bus, and the look of disappointment on their face when they, they don't get his autograph, uh, the, the response. I mean, there was a great picture from the Portland paper. Michael walking onto the floor with our team, and there's a single file line, and you see in the background all these kids standing, taking pictures and like reaching out to touch him. It's like uh, I compare it to biblically about people reaching out trying to touch, touch Christ's garment. It's like they just want to touch him. And now the last legend we have is Magic Johnson. Magic recognizes Jordan's influence not only on the court, but also in shaping the global popularity of basketball. Their mutual respect is evident in various public statements and interactions. The story Magic shared about Michael Jordan showed his God-given ability to hang in the air and do moves that Magic didn't even think were possible. And Magic explained it in a hilarious way. I don't usually talk trash, but I had to that time. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, Michael, if you don't turn into Air Jordan, we're going to blow y'all out. <laughs> Man, he started sweating. <laughs> it was hard. That tongue went long. <laughs> <laughs> you know when that tongue comes out. It's over. It's a problem. He about, he about to do something. <laughs> Boy, that dude came out that timeout. He scored about four straight threes. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> and I went, oh, man. Then he came down. I got to show you this one. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. So, I won't hurt myself. Okay. <laughs> so he stole the basketball. He coming down the right side. He takes off. David Robinson coming this way. So Mike just cuffed him. Mm. And he just looked at In him. In the air. And he kept looking. He kept looking. He kept looking. <laughs> he went all the way down, Jack. He did a 360. Ooh. Bam! Yeah, duck. I said, that's it. It's that's the, it. It's over now. That's him. It's over now. And uh, Larry Bird and I sitting down. So he come in with his cigar. Whew, got his drink. <laughs> so how old is he right now? He's 26, 27? Yeah, yeah, young, you Young know. boy, yeah. yeah. So, I just want y'all to know. <laughs> There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> so guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And tell me, what is your favorite Jordan story? So make sure you like, share, subscribe, and until next time.